Cool. So, friends, it's cold outside, and I had a client. She reached out to me and said, dude, I just bought a house from you. It's minus 55 out. Not really, but kind of, maybe. And she said, what do I do as a first-time homeowner in cold weather? And I said, I got some ideas, and I gave her some tips, but I said, I'm going to do you one better. So I put out a video to all my home inspector friends, and a bunch of them sent me some videos back. So we're going to share that with you right now. If you own a home, whether you're a first-time home buyer or you've owned your home for years, here's some great tips to keep your home safe and warm and not falling apart. When it's minus 50, whatever it is, why don't we move to Mexico? All right. Hi, Lucas here with Cabin the Castle Property Inspections. I'm um, just returning a message uh, to Justin about um, homeowners prepping their house for the weather, for the cold weather. Um, the main things I recommend to homeowners in this weather are uh, preventing freezing of pipes. So your outdoor taps, make sure the garden hose is disconnected off that. Um, to prevent it from backing up into your house and uh, rupturing that pipe causing a leak. Um, also, you want to make sure any uh, pipes that are against the wall that are exposed maybe to the foundation um, don't have water in them or, and are drained. Um, obviously, all irrigation lines need to be flushed if you have any irrigation outside. Um, in terms of insulation and stuff like that, um, you can always get a home inspection just to see um, sort of uh, where you're at with uh, insulation around the perimeter of your house and, and in your attic. Uh, an inspector will poke his head up there to make sure uh, things are, are looking good up there in terms of insulation. Um, you can also just get a thermal imaging scan if, if that's if that's what you need, um, just to make sure all your insulation is continuous throughout the uh, in, in your building envelope. Um, then another thing I uh, always talk to homeowners about is fresh air. Fresh air in the winter is always an issue just because uh, windows don't open in the winter typically. So you wanna make sure any fresh air intake you have um, is, uh, is, is free and clear of all obstructions. So um, usually uh, it pokes out the side of the house. Um, in mid-efficients or old style furnaces, you have like a silver hood that says air intake, fresh air intake. You wanna make sure that's clear of, of dust and debris. Um, and then on high efficient ones, the newer furnaces, there's a white pipe coming out the side of the house um, and you just want to make sure it's it's free of free of any debris or any it's clear and it's 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 bringing fresh air into your house. Um, otherwise, you'll just be sort of recirculating the the, uh, the the air in your house. If it can't pull fresh air in, it'll just the return air will just keep circulating uh, your breath basically, which is disgusting. But that's what happens. Um, and then another thing I talk to homeowners about is keeping your humidity relatively low, so around thirty percent. 30% is normal, 30 to 40%. That'll prevent any um, uh, intense sort of condensation around your windows, which can cause rot around the window frame. Also, it'll prevent, you know, uh, because your air, uh, the return air ducts in your house pull air from your house. If it's humid air, it'll exhaust uh, that humid humidity out the vent pipe, which can cause freezing and it can cause your furnace to, to stop if it plugs right off with ice. So. Um, you want to run, run lower humidity, make sure your fresh air is clear and, uh, and prevent all pipes on the out, outside walls um, from freezing. So that's disconnecting hose bibs or just draining like irrigation and stuff like that. So um, yeah, if you have any questions, certainly give us a call 780-487-7177 and ask for Lucas. Thanks. Hey there. It's Brent with North 49 Home Inspections. I was asked a question of maybe some tips for a homeowner in extreme cold temperatures. So here's a few tips. Probably a big one is the temperature of your home. You don't wanna be turning it down to 16 degrees at night and then cranking it up to 21 during the day. Find a constant temperature, you know, 18, 19 degrees and just leave it there. In extreme cold temperatures, it can take a very long time for your furnace to heat that home up if you've dropped it a few degrees overnight. Uh, another thing is make sure you have a nice clean furnace filter. The furnace is gonna be working hard already, so let's not make that fan motor work any harder by having to pull air through a dirty filter. Another thing is just be aware of where your main water shutoff for your home is, just in case you need to access it. Other things that our really good idea is make sure that we have a good seal around all of our windows and our doors. Make sure that the garage door is kept closed on uh, attached garage homes. There are other things, but those are kind of some really good ones to, to think about. 
So there's a few things that you can do as preventative measures to keep your house safe during the next cold spell. Uh, number one, make sure your fresh air intake for your furnace is clean on the outside. Number two, uh, make sure your filter to your furnace is clean. Um, that way it's not starving for air. Uh, number three, make sure your high, if you have a high efficiency furnace and or a high efficiency hot water tank, that the exhaust will create icicles on the outside. Make sure those are knocked down um, quite often on the outside of the home throughout the cold, cold spell. So um, these will um, run efficiently and the way they should. Also make sure you your doors are sealed properly and all your windows are shut closed all the way. All right, friends, hopefully that was helpful. Thank you to all the home inspector friends of mine who reached out, sent a video. Even if the video quality wasn't great, the content was exceptional. If you've watched this far and you're in a position where you're thinking, you know, I'm looking to buy my first place, or maybe you're sitting there thinking, you know, I've outgrown my current house. I'm looking to make a move, sell my current place, buy another one. We have just the thing for you, friends. If you're into reading, if you're into content, if you're into making a good decision and doing things the right way the first time and avoiding all of the expensive real estate catch 22s that can take money out of your pocket or leave equity on the table when you're doing all the fun real estate things, go get a copy of my latest book. The Empower Homebuyer Academy, 500 pages of all the things you may think to ask and more importantly, all the questions you never thought to ask about making a good decision when it comes to your next home. I realize I just bumped the mic, but uh, we're going to go with it. Get empowered. Give me a call or text at 780-405-5272 or call my business partner, Sandy Emmerich at 780-667-7699 if you want a more refined real estate experience. Get empowered. We'll see you on the next video. Get empowered.